Good morning, friends of the Christ at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Wilmington, Delaware, and anyone who may be joining us from near or far as we worship in this virtual uh, way during the COVID-19 crisis. I would make a couple of quick announcements. First of all, please watch all of the communications that come out from St. Mark's via email, via the Lion, our newsletter, and in other forms because we have some things to invite you to participate in, especially in terms of educational opportunities, but also uh, because we are working very diligently in terms of being able to open our ministry here in the building. It hasn't stopped outside of the building, but here in the building in an intelligent and healthy and safe a way. As we make those decisions, we want to communicate them to you and we would like it if you, if you hear them. Also, we received a letter this week uh, from a Reverend Robin Brown, and she has indicated here, I'll just read a sentence, that's all we need. Your incredible generosity in 2019 has made you one of the most, 100 most generous congregations in the ELCA World Hunter hunger, and Lutheran disaster response in the entire ELCA. St. Mark's in Wilmington, Delaware, is among the hundred most generous congregations in terms of hunger relief and so forth and so on. That's something that should make us incredibly grateful that the Lord has put in us a spirit of generosity and care. Now, finally, happy birthday, Body of Christ. It's Pentecost and we will be celebrating Pentecost, hopefully in a spiritually uplifting way today. And we begin, as we believe, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I hope there are some young children, boys and girls out there who can tune in during at least this portion of our time together when most typically we have Lenny and Leroy and Larry with us. That's two lions and a sheep. And today I'm going to ask the three of them to just sit and listen like I'm going to ask you to sit and listen as I talk about another creature that's mentioned in the Bible. There are all kinds of living creatures that are named in here, not just lions and lambs or sheep, but also bears and snakes and camels and donkeys and any number of other kinds of, of uh, animals or insects or birds or whatever. And today I would like to introduce you to a very, very good friend of the Church of Jesus Christ, and that's a dove. The dove is mentioned in the Bible in a very special way. At the baptism of Jesus, what a glorious, wonderful day that must have been for him. And even though you were probably baptized when you were too young to remember, I hope you can look back on your baptism as a glorious and wonderful day when you became a part of the Church of Jesus Christ, which was born on this day of Pentecost because the Spirit came in, in a way like a dove, lighting on the disciples and enable them to speak about Jesus in phenomenal and lovely ways. A dove is a bird that we typically uh, associate with peace. So we not, need not be afraid of a dove. Rather, we need to expect perhaps a dove or the spirit like a dove to land on our shoulders and inspire our hearts so that we can rejoice and be glad and be happy in Jesus, our Savior, who died on the cross for our sins, and so that we can sing and pray and speak to the Lord with our praise and thanksgiving for all of his good and glorious gifts, and finally, so that we might know peace. That's what the dove, or the spirit like a dove, landed on Jesus and landed on the church to bring. We are a people of peace, whether we're young like some of you or whether we're older. We are dove people because we are spiritual people. The dove and the Holy Spirit go together. So Lenny, Larry, Leroy, there's a picture of another new friend, the dove. We will see you next week. Hope you have a very nice, safe, and healthy week. Bye. The reading is from Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear 
each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. The Gospel is from the seventh chapter of John. On the last day of the festival of Booths, the great day while Jesus was standing in the temple, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He writes the gospel. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Back in the Lenten season, we read in John chapter 4 about the encounter of Jesus with the Samaritan woman at the well. A long and powerful story about many things. In this encounter, Jesus offered the woman living water. Quote, the water that I will give will become in them, or in you, woman at the well, a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Next Sunday, we celebrate the feast or festival of the Holy Trinity. The appointed first reading is from the Hebrew Scriptures and is the whole creation account in Genesis 1 and a portion of Genesis 2. We will not be reading that lesson next Sunday. It's just far too long, but we invite you to reread it on your own as you have opportunity. Near its beginning, however, we read this. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Here at the very beginning, wind and water go together. In the encounter of Jesus with Nicodemus in John 3, Jesus shared with him, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Here again, water and spirit go together. I tend to prefer water and wind for the Greek word pneuma 
can mean spirit, breath, wind, any of those three, even ghost. The church has historically associated water and spirit or water and wind with baptism. Today, as we celebrate the birthday of the church with the advent of the Holy Spirit, we begin with prayer. Gracious, merciful, loving, and empowering God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior, allow the holy wind to blow among, over, and onto us, each of us, today in a powerful yet peaceful way. We are not gathered in one place, but appropriately separated as a precaution due to what we might rightly call an evil wind, a microscopic beast which is wreaking havoc and death all over the planet. Keep us safe these days, O Lord, but not just safe. Keep us believing and empowered for your worship and your service. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been my honor uh, to have traveled well over a dozen times to Palestine, Israel, mostly to lead pilgrimages, but also to study at St. George's College, attend weddings of friends, and celebrate the dedication of Dar al-Kalima, a facility in Bethlehem designed by Lutheran Christians there to promote health and peace. I'm sad about having had to cancel a planned trip with Rabbi Grumbacher to Palestine, Israel again in February of 2021. We just can't count on being able to make that trip. Each and every time there, however, I've been struck by the spiritual as well as the political and even, even uh, physical significance of water. The litany of stories about wet places and circumstances is long. Some stories are sad. Saddest to me is the dramatic receding of the Dead Sea the lowest point on the planet at 1,300 feet below sea level. It has been really radical and is sad to see. Some stories, however, are fascinating, as in the incredible lengths to which ancient peoples went to assure a supply of water, especially in a siege. Water in that part of the world has been relatively scarce, making the stewardship of water absolutely essential. For at least 25 years, and this is an aside, but every baptism I officiated at at Concordia Church was with water from the Jordan River. That did not make it any more of a baptism, but it usually held special feelings for the parents and for the congregation. In today's gospel, Jesus cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. The festival of booths noted here is one of several festivals the Hebrews were to keep in the course of a year or after a number of years. Interestingly, this festival had an association with the number 50. We remember that Pentecost, which is yet another festival, fell 50 days after Easter. Within the festival of booths, offerings were presented by fire. We associate Pentecost with the fire of the Spirit having lit on the heads of the disciples as they spoke. I bring all of this up to show how many of our Christian practices and beliefs find their roots in the history of the Hebrew people. In Isaiah the prophet, chapter 12, verse 3, we read, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say on that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Please noted, notice that embedded in this festival and the others is thankfulness and joy. The people of God were to stop at various times during the year to consider anew their relationship with God as one in which to know 
and to celebrate joy and thanksgiving. Here in John 7, we note that Jesus was speaking about the Spirit, not yet received by believers, for that could not happen until Jesus was glorified in his death and resurrection. Okay, folks, we are now two millennia plus on the other side of the first advent of the Christ and all that it has meant. The Holy Spirit or wind or breath has been granted to the church of Jesus Christ, that power source we need to accomplish the ministry and mission assigned to us. Within the lifetimes of most of us, we have not experienced a desert the likes of which we are now in. And I'm not speaking of the virus and its devastations, but of this time when membership in the churches is rapidly declining with young people especially leaving the flock in droves, leaving we graying or balding folks behind. It is sadder than the receding of the Dead Sea. What we need to reverse the trend is not just ingenuity, creativity, love, and renewed commitment, but power. The images of wind, water, and fire are all of spiritual power. Early Christians were powerless until Pentecost. Spiritual renewal needs now to take place, for we too are powerless. Many or most of us may be afraid of a personal or corporate Pentecost. We simply don't wish to end up be behaving in odd, even if in productive ways. Let me share a couple of things. First of all, the image of the Holy Spirit taking from, taken from the baptism of Jesus himself is that of a dove. Power can be calm, quiet, and gentle rather than boisterous and brutal. I always need to go on to suggest that the dove is not a buzzard. Empowerment is to enliven the heart and not eat it out. We spoke early on today about the wind moving over the waters and how important and essential water is to life, especially in the Middle East where it can be scarce. The scriptures are, in a real sense, soaking wet with water images, which, with the exception of the flood in Noah's day, tend to be positive. Many people fear the images of the book of Revelation, which is one of the reasons some of us are studying an early portion of it in our Zoom class on Sunday mornings. Listen to what is said, though, at the end of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 17. It's beautiful. The spirit and the bride, the bride is us, the church, say, come. And let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty let everyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. Nothing to be afraid of there. My prayer, as your interim pastor, anticipating a day when another pastor will come here and stay a while, is that we drink of the Spirit together. And regardless of age or other circumstances, become empowered together for renewal, revival, and rejoicing. In the name of Jesus, amen.
lifts up the mountains from the valleys of sea, and over the eons you call to each thing, wake from your slumbers and rise on your Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe for any reason. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Providing God, we call on spirit of healing. Bless first responders, doctors, nurses, midwives, lab and x-ray techs, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers as they care for those in need, and custodians as well as clerks and other essential businesses are all people we cannot do without. We thank you and we thank them. Keep them safe, sane, and sustained in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As invited and instructed, we weep with those who weep these days over whatever individuals are personally experiencing and over what we are all confronted with in the COVID-19 crisis. A microscopic germ can bring nations to their knees and humble us all. For those mourning the loss of loved ones, those afflicted with this or other diseases, those who have lost jobs and income, those who are afraid, grant your healing presence and loving power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God and Lord, as we worship these days in our virtual ways, as we contend with a silent, invisible, and deadly enemy, we also are experiencing increasing instances of racial tension and in all too many cases, injustices. Cities like Minneapolis are burning. As Christians, our minds cannot ignore this and our hearts cannot tolerate it. Lord God, on this special day, grant a special measure of your Holy Spirit to heal our nation. May we ourselves be led to be instruments of justice and peace in our lives. Forgive us for in any way participating in instances of any sort of hate and abuse of fellow humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. Miss Elizabeth, welcome Mary to her home. Give us a spirit of hospitality to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places. Stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the privacy of this moment, and in the silence of our hearts, we bring to you, O oh Lord, our personal prayer.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. And again, happy birthday to the Christian church and to each and all of you out there. Please be safe, intelligent, healthy, and anticipate with the rest of us when we can do some of the things we miss so very, very much. Amen. Hello, everyone. John Lasher, Director of Music and Worship Arts at St. Mark's Lutheran Church here. I don't normally introduce the hymns during these pre-recorded services, but as I was preparing our final hymn for this week, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind, one line of the first verse jumped out at me. It says, drive us out from sheltered comfort. Now, in light of current world events, I immediately saw the potential for misinterpretation of this line. So I wrote to the publisher and asked if maybe we could change it, given the circumstances. And I want to read to you just a short excerpt from their response. We take great care to preserve the published versions of Herman Stumpfel's wonderfully vivid texts, approving modifications only when critically necessary. In this particular case, the phrase, drive us out, propel or carry along by force in a specified direction is a fitting word to articulate the urgency with which the Holy Spirit directs the faithful. This line may highlight the Holy Spirit's call to creative forms of ministry in this unprecedented crisis, stirred from a shelter of rugged individualism into compassionate care for the needy, perhaps. Paradox can be quite profound. So, with that in mind, let's join in singing God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind. <laughs> 